Over the years of running this YouTube channel, I've accumulated a lot of camera and video equipment. I've sold some of it along the way, but I've just bought a new camera and thought it would be interesting to compare it against the other ones that I currently own. And of course, the things I normally do on this channel is film synthesizers, so that's what we'll do today. Okay, let's start with the cheapest camera I own. This is the CX405 Handycam from Sony, a camcorder. The thing about these camcorders is that they are quite comfortable to hold in your hand. They're quite ergonomic, but the standout feature of these is probably the zoom. So without moving anywhere, I can zoom in just like so on the synthesizer. This is a feature probably not so important for filming synthesizers, but you do get quite a cool perspective and effect when you zoom in like this and I can go even further. Check this out. Okay, even more if we want to. I haven't moved. And that is the max there. Let's go down. Look at the text there. So that's pretty incredible, but not a feature I use very much when filming synthesizers. The other thing about these is the steady shot, as Sony call it, image stabilization. Now this camera doesn't have optical stabilization, it's all digital. And I haven't found it to be all that impressive, but it does do a good job, especially at long zoom levels. Okay, and the sun has broken through now, so we'll have to do something about the lighting in here. So shooting everything using natural light today. No expensive studio lights for this particular demonstration. And it's about the middle of the day, so the lighting is pretty good right now. Things you should be looking out for then when we compare these different cameras is the image quality itself, how crisp and sharp the image is, the, the definition between the dark and the light shades, that's the dynamic range, and how it's repro reproducing the colors. And I deliberately chose this bright red Nord Electro for that reason, because red is a challenging colour for video cameras to pick up on without it looking overly saturated. So we'll see how this does. Pay also attention to the image stabilisation. If the synthesizer itself is stable without too much shaking, everything here is obviously handheld. Pay attention also to the edges of the screen where you might see strange artifacts due to the digital image stabilization, like a jelly effect, which is really quite uh, horrible. Let's take a look at the front panel controls then. Zoom in a little bit, go a bit closer. So just pay attention here to the detail that the camera is picking up. I will be shooting everything in 1080p, 50 frames a second today. Okay, let's move on to the next camera. This then, as you can tell by the fish angle appearance from the lens, is our action camera from today's videos. This is the GoPro Hero 7. So not the latest model, which is the GoPro Hero 10. But regarding image quality, I think it's fair to say that there's been minor incremental changes in the image quality, nothing revolutionary. So this is pretty much what you can expect from the latest GoPro as well. There's no zoom or anything on this, you're stuck at this very wide angle. This is on the wide setting, the default setting, everything actually is uh, configured. I did a factory reset, so it's exactly like it is when you get it out of the box. There is a linear setting which zooms in a little bit more and removes some of the curved fisheye effect. But in my experience, that just creates some crazy distortion around the edges anyway. So we're just using the default wide setting here, which is your standard GoPro wide angle look that we all love and hate. Also shooting 50 frames a second here, 1080p. The thing about GoPros that I really like is that the image stabilization is fantastic, even though it's completely digital, it does an amazing job. The algorithms that GoPro have done are absolutely stunning. But I have found that it works best when you're outdoors filming scenery and landscapes or subjects, uh, people doing sports and stuff like that, of course. 
Once you're indoors with slightly lower light and filming a static subject, like a synthesizer, I find the image stabilization isn't quite as effective, or far from effective. But let's judge for ourselves how this is coming out. No zoom, so just to film some details on the front panel controls. Let's go in a little bit closer like this, and I'm actually holding it now just three centimeters away from the synthesizer. So that's how zoomed out this lens is. But here you can get an idea of the detail and assess the image stabilization. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the results of this test as well. And by the way, all of the audio you're hearing today is captured directly from the camera. So that's also something that we can compare in these comparisons. So yes, it will be a very echoey room. I apologize for that, but it's interesting to see how the cameras deal with that. Let's do a little shot here of the back of the synthesizer and then we'll move on to the next camera. But yeah, when the image stabilization hyper smooth or something, I think they call it a GoPro. When it's working well, it's amazing giving you gimbal like shots. Let's try something out here. Zoom in. See what that looks like. Moving swiftly on then, this is the camera that most of us have in our pockets or something very similar. This is my smartphone, my own Samsung S something, an older telephone, it's maybe one or two years old, one of the cheaper models in Samsung's range. And this is the video quality you can expect from that and the inbuilt microphones. Let's see, I'm not sure if I can zoom in or out. I can, so this is it zoomed in. Zoom out, zoom out again. That's the wide angle view. I do have everything reset to the factory defaults. I don't think this is capable of going up to 50 frames per second, so it might be on 30. We'll check when I edit the video. Let's go back to the normal zoom range there. And we'll go a bit closer. I have video stabilization. It's actually zoomed in quite a lot. There we go. I have a video stabilization enabled, image stabilization. I'm not sure if it's doing a great job or not. Still feels a bit zoomed in. Let's go to 1x. There we go. But this is the kind of results you can expect with a cheap smartphone. We will compare with a more high-end smartphone in just a second, but how is the autofocus doing? How is it producing the colors? The reds look a bit overly saturated on the screen here, and the image stabilization looks a bit wobbly as well. It is what it is, but this, I suppose, would be good enough to get you started on YouTube. Zoom out one more time. And this is the maximum I can do. Close up of some of the details on the controls. There you go. So a cheap smartphone. That's what you can expect. Now then, this should be interesting. This is the most expensive camera I own. It's a DSLR from Canon, the EOS RP, I think it's called. You would have seen the, uh, the uh, heading by now, the caption, so you'll know exactly. With a nice 40 millimeter, very wide aperture lens for some great cinematic uh, shots. The thing is with this camera though, as you can already see, is there is no digital image stabilization in the firmware and there is no optical image stabilization in the lens or on the sensor for that matter. So this is going to be probably quite unusable footage, but it will be very interesting to see how well these uh, very highly regarded Canon color science does when it comes to the colors inside the room here capturing accurately the colors of the synthesizer. So using auto mode here, just for this particular demonstration, although I uh, realize that most users of DSLRs will be using manual mode to get the best possible results from the lens. Also, of course, using a tripod. We'll put it on a tripod in a second so you can compare. But let's see how the autofocus is doing. I'm not doing any manual focusing here. 
Let's get some shots like this. Let's have a look at the front panel. Using the built-in microphone, of course, as well on the camera here. And I will be applying no post-processing to the audio other than just normalizing the levels. And I'll not be doing any color correction or grading to the video files either. You'll be seeing them exactly as they come out of the camera. Shooting again in 1080p, 50 frames a second. So it's now on a tripod and I've switched to a more manual mode and I've set the aperture to 2.8, which is the widest that this 40 millimeter lens goes. And this is typically, typically what uh, video producers will do. They'll open up the aperture as much as possible to give you that hopefully blurry background look that is so popular on YouTube these days. But this is the kind of results that you'll get with the camera on a, on a tripod and some manual settings. This then is the AX43 and the camera I'm most interested personally in testing today because it's my most recent purchase. This is another camcorder then, but much more higher end than the previous one I showed you. This one comes in at around, around I think, seven or eight hundred dollars. Although I don't have huge expectations for this because I've owned the predecessor, actually a more expensive camera, the AX53 before. I wasn't overly impressed with the results of that one, but this is a more modern camera and it will be interesting to compare. This one has optical image stabilization in the lens. The lens is actually incredible with a gimbal-like system, uh, like a floating gimbal built into the camera, as well as the digital stabilization. Everything on the factory settings today after a clean factory reset, 1080, 50 frames a second using the best image stabilization setting as well. It's actually looking very stable and smooth here on the viewfinder. Let's zoom in to experiment with that. So I'm just standing still, zooming in here. The lighting is very challenging. This is a backlit subject, the sun coming in through the window there, lighting up the synthesizer from behind. Here we go. Let's zoom in on the logo. That's the maximum zoom I have available. And you can see the optical and image stabilization working together there. Whoops, let's go in a bit closer. The other nice thing about camcord is, is they have a nice grip. They're quite ergonomic to hold. And I do find that the built-in uh, built microphones, if that's something you want to use, are somewhat better than you get on DSLR cameras or your smartphones. I hope so anyway, we'll know for sure when I edit this video. So I'm zoomed out as much as possible now. I'm going to do a nice zoom in on the front panel controls. Normally I would be using a tripod as well with this kind of camera. Looks to me like the stabilization is better with the built-in lens gimbal on this camcorder. Let's zoom in right onto those drawbars. You'll see all the dust and dirt on the keyboard, so apologies for that. How is it doing for the color reproduction on the Sony here? Will be interesting to see. Let's come in close now. Zoomed out. Take a look at the front panel controls. So I do like camcorders anyway. They don't have the same great image quality as the more expensive system digital cameras with interchangeable lenses. But you do get that magnificent zoom range, which is something that really does come in useful when you're shooting outdoors. Not so much in the studio here. And the image stabilization is great as well. And you can always count on them to uh, get the autofocus right, something that is somewhat still slightly unreliable with the more expensive DSLR cameras. The thing I suppose about these camcorders is that they have a very uh, narrow aperture, meaning that pretty much everything is in focus. If I take a shot here then, 
you'll see what I mean. There's no uh, blurry background at all here, which is what is so trendy these days on most YouTube shots. Okay, a little bit later in the day, I had to wait for my son to come home with his phone. This is the latest iPhone, an iPhone 13. iPhone 13. Is it a Pro? Just an iPhone 13. Uh, so this is the uh, state-of-the-art Apple iPhone. Uh, hopefully I can get the files from here over to the computer. I remember it used to be a real pain the last time I had an iPhone, but hopefully it's better now. Now, so later in the day, the light is uh, still pretty good, but it might look a little bit different, the footage to the other footage that I took earlier. So yeah, another thing I forgot to mention is that lighting is all important. As equally important as the camera gear, the video gear is the lighting setup to get a pleasing shot. that looks good to the eye and is well lit. We don't have that, but we have plenty of daylight today, so I think it'll be okay. But yeah, the stabilization is looking nice. I've just realized I've got the synth in a different orientation than we had it before, so sorry about that. Let's have a close up on the screen. We are shooting at 30 frames per second, but hopefully 1080p, I think. So there you go, I think that's the same angle we had it before. Let's have a close up on some of the details. Well, I hope you found it as interesting as I did. Probably not, but I was going to make these comparisons for myself anyway and thought I might as well upload and share with you. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.